I know what the Bible says about being instant in season and out. I feel more out this morning than in. <clears throat> but, uh, anyway, we'll see what the Lord will do here. Uh, as Mark was talking about in Sunday school class, talking about doing things that you know you lose your temper and get aggravated. And uh, I uh, yesterday I was making my way down to Brother Mitchell's and passed a big box truck, saw him coming, and. Uh, that's happened to me before, only I didn't get out of the way last time enough. I was off the road, but I still didn't get out of the way. And uh, I was in a semi-tractor trailer, and he totaled that truck. So I've always got a fear of somebody on that yellow line. Well, a big box truck on Regis Road, and me, even my big white truck, there's not much room. And uh, so I got as far over as I could. And don't you know, he ran me completely off the road. There I sat, all in the ditch, Brother Jim, big fat fender almost touching the bank and ripping my running boards off. And uh, right now the four-wheel drive don't work, and so there I sat, in the mud. As soon as it happened, I jumped out, got out in the middle of the road. The old fella never even stopped. Never hit his brakes. It's like he didn't even see me. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. But uh, sometimes there's something in us that just rises up. And, uh, I ain't saying any bad words. Now, would you have got out and said, uh, praise the Lord? <laughs> if you did, you're more holy than me. But then, because I didn't say that, all right? I didn't say anything. But there I sat and uh, <clears throat> had to make a phone call once again. Brother Mitchell's got two for the books. Uh, Chevrolet pulling something besides the Chevrolet out. And, uh, but I tell you, I wasn't afraid to make the call. Huh? I wasn't afraid to make the call. And uh, I, I think there's a lot of folks spiritually could do better than just make the call. Amen. Right. And uh, I, uh, I have been there so many times that I know it would have been better if I'd have made the call sooner. Right. And uh, but anyway, I uh, I got over it. No damage done except a bunch of mud crammed everywhere where it wasn't supposed to be. And uh, that's the first time that truck had ever seen that much mud in its life since I owned it. And uh, so anyway, but uh, uh, and it does seem like. It does seem like that the devil has a way about him. But there's nothing new about that, is there? He's been doing that. I mean, if he done it to God, he's going to do it to us, ain't he? Just make the call. Just make the call. It's not what I'm preaching on. I could, I guess. Probably should. That probably would be the right way to go. But let's turn to Lamentations chapter number 21 uh, quickly here, and I'll try to make this as quick and painless as possible. Uh, it shouldn't take very long. Um, Lamentations chapter, I said chapter 21, didn't I? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, chapter 3. It'd be hard to get chapter 21 out of that one. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in Him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for Him, to the soul that seeketh Him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. You may be seated this morning. Thank you much for standing. I want to preach to you here for just a little while. I, 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 I tried to touch on it just a little bit, I believe, on the uh, watch night service. And uh, uh, Brother Sparks and them had called this morning trying to make your mind up about church, having church, what time to have it, when to have it, and all that. Kind of went back and forth there for a while, and and uh, 
very last comment it was that I would be preaching that I was probably sitting on about eight or ten. Not true. <laughs> Just not true. And uh, But uh, we're going to see what the Lord will do here with this. I, I, I've been thinking about it several times since the New Year's service. And uh, it was on me pretty hard then. And, and uh, not saying God gave it to me again, but this is all I can feel today. But uh, there's something that we fail to realize sometimes when we're talking about God and uh, talking about the blessings of God. There is something that we fail to, to keep in mind, and that's the fact that God has the ability to take something that seems old and make it brand new. Yes, he does. Right. Yeah. It's amazing how he does that. Yeah. And uh, But... <clears throat> The Bible stated that they are new every morning. Having, having stated his distress and temptation, the prophet here shows how he was raised above it. Bad as things are, it's owing to the mercies of God that they're not any worse. Right? Uh, we should observe what makes for us and what is the same against us. God's compassions fail not, period. Right. They never miss. They never fail. And, and, and the fact that makes it even better, Sister Pauline, is every single morning. I don't know how he does it. But every single morning, Brother Mitchell, they're new. Right. He had compassion yesterday. He had mercy on me yesterday. Uh, could have been a lot worse. And, and, and you know, but he... he, he and today, it's all brand new. Hallelujah. It started all over. It's all brand new. And I can't, I can't do anything about it. I can't make it better than that. Can we make it? We can't make it any better than that. So God's got a way of making it better. The portions on earth are perishing things, but God is our forever portion. Amen. It's our duty. And we're going to be comforted and satisfaction. There, there is the, we are to hope. And quietly wait for the storm to tell you something right now. I, I, I'm not captain of the ship, but I can tell you this right now. I am a man of very, very, very little patience. Little. I mean little. And you think I got much, not much now. 15, 20 years ago, I had any. So I got in trouble a lot because of that. But I'll tell you something I've learned to do. And I don't have it mastered, but I've learned to wait just a little bit longer. Right. Anybody got it mastered? Uh, you just sit back perfectly, perfectly quietly and, and, and spiritually rejoicingly wait all the time. Nobody does that. If you're human and breathing, you don't. Only Jesus can get by with being like that. But we have to wait. You see, afflictions do and very much will work for our good. I know it's hard right now, but could you say amen? Right now. Many have found it, and to bear his yoke in his in their youth will make us humble and serious. Yes. Right. Come on, folks, this ain't no joke. It's not a game we're playing here. Right. It's not a roller coaster we're riding here. To be up one minute and down the next and to be in one minute and out the next. Come on, we, do you realize we are fighting a battle here where lives, very lives, are at stake. I said people are at stake. Their lives, are, their souls are at stake. And I'm going to tell you, we've got to be in this hour consistent in our journey. My daddy always said it was a hard thing. I learned it the hard way. Don't have it mastered. But he said, there's two times to do it. Uh -huh. When you feel like it. Oh, God, help us when we don't. <laughs> My dad also had a, a little thing sitting on the, on, on, on the, in our house where I was raised. We had a, you could see all the way through the kitchen. It, there was a chimney in the middle. You could go all the way around, you know, or we could go on one side. The other side was a, a bunch of shelves made. Mom had a bunch of trinkets sitting up there. Dad had this little A-frame thing sitting up there that had a saying on it. It said, rule number one, the boss is always right. Rule number two, if in doubt, refer to rule number one. Oh, he loved that. He loved 
you. And boy, I'm telling you what, as a kid, I thought, I don't like it. That don't make any sense. And, and, and I found out that obviously it does. But when we're talking about God, real number one, God is always right. That's right. If in doubt, refer to rule number one. That's the way it is. Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, God, listen, we, we've got to get to the place that we wean ourselves from the world. Right. Who otherwise would have been proud, and they are proud and unruly. Have you ever seen a world that's in the shape that it's in today as unruly and proud as they are? You know why they're like that? They don't understand the intensity. They don't understand the circumstances. They don't even understand they're being used by God. It's a mess. Some of it. If tribulation works patience, that patience will work experience, and that experience a hope that makes us not ashamed. Right. Hmm? Oh God, if, it's Lord. Amen. if we cannot say without an unwavering voice, the Lord is my portion, then may we not say, I desire to have it. Because he already is. He is not something that we have to obtain. He is something that is already there. Come right. on now. Right. Oh yeah, I'm not going to, listen, I'm going to try to put you to sleep here. We're going to be done here in just a few minutes. Happy shall we be if we learn, oh, I'm going to tell you, it's hard for me to say. It really is right here. All right. Happy shall we be if we learn to receive affliction as laid on us by him, God. Uh -huh. yeah. That's tough. That's right. That's you might say, right. God ain't going to do it. Yes, he will. That's right. He will do it. Amen. To put us through the school of hard knocks. James, it don't make sense sometimes. That's right. Hmm? Day and night, proclaim the mercy and compassion of God. Did you know we couldn't exist throughout the day if there was not a continuing, superintending providence? Come on, listen. Just for what? What would happen, Sister Minnie? If for just a split second, I don't know how to measure that. I don't even know what the measurement is on that. I just know that it's shorter than a second. Whatever a second is, cut it in half and cut that even down if you want to. But 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 a split second at least, if God were to pull back his hand. Oh God. Come on, we think we got trouble now. Yeah. Oh now. Oh God. Just I'm not talking about for twenty four hours. That, 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 that would, we wouldn't even exist. But just for a split second, if you were to pull it back and put it back. <clears throat> Who could be preserved in the night, Brother Harold, if it wasn't for the watchman? If it wasn't for somebody watching over us? I'm feeling better than I expected here. What would we do? If it wasn't for somebody watching over us, I remember I remember riding with with uh, 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 Brother Devon. I call him Brother Devon because he's a preacher. He is a man of God. He was a good man. He 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 hadn't got the call to preach then, or had accepted it rather. But but when I was working for him the last time, but here we was going off to California, and and, and I'm tell you, I was green as a gourd when it come to sleeping in a truck going down the road with somebody else driving. <clears throat> And, and, and I literally, I went about three turns in my driving on the way to California, Brother Jim, laying back there awake when I was supposed to have been asleep. I mean, I, I couldn't sleep. The man was driving, and, 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 and here I was laying in his truck, and, 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 and new to me, and I was used to sleep in the bed steel. I couldn't get used to that. So I went about three turns with hardly any sleep. I probably closed my eyes and made a rest of it, but I didn't do that good sleeping. And I remember coming back one time. We were coming back from, I said California, but it was actually North Carolina. I drove all the way there. We made the turn. He started driving back. I was wore out. I had drove the dump truck all day long. I don't require a long book, so the time didn't matter to, to the book, but it did me, of course. We jumped in the truck that night and went off to California, uh, to North Carolina, and I 
drove all the way there. We turned around and come back. And, and, and he was driving. I, I got back there, and I was, by that time, I had been in that situation enough. I could sleep back there. And I mean, I went to sleep. And the singing of those tires, just that loud, that just put me to sleep. But the next thing I know, those tires made a complete different sound. They went from singing to whoa, 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 whoa. That truck was all over the road, and all of a sudden that thing tipped up and hit. Listen, I know it's going to be funny if you get a visual on it, but, 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 but try, to, try to be careful with that. But I wound up literally in the floor of the sleeper with my feet straight up in there because the truck was turning over. The gravity was shoving me in the floor. I couldn't even get up. And all that happened, just I'm talking about that split second stuff, okay? Uh, yeah. And all at once, about the time I thought, what in the world, my God, what's happening? I heard it slam back down all over the road again. He goes sliding off to the side of the road. I yanked open that sleeper. I said, what's it? What are you doing? <laughs> he said, tore up. He couldn't even tell me what was going on. Oh, Word has it that car came off, pushed him off. I can't imagine a little car. I'm not going to let that happen. But I can't imagine a little bitty car pushing him plumb off to the road, off to the side of 40, Interstate 40, till he gets caught up in the... And, 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 and I'd say if he was sitting here, we didn't talk about it and laughed about it many times. He got caught up in that cable in the middle of the road, brother Jim, and that's what slammed the truck back there. It was God's mercy. Yeah. Right. I have seen many of those trucks where they were not so lucky. Uh -huh. What's your point? My point I'm trying to say is sometimes God has mercy and made a brand new mercy and made a brand new protection and made a brand new covering that we did not even know about. Uh -huh. I got up that morning and had no idea that I'd be in that situation, but thank God I'm here today because of Him. Uh -huh. New. What does new mean? It's, it's not hard to understand. New is fresh. It is a new thing. Yes. Now, with that said, I'm going to get us all here, including myself. I wonder today, do we still feel that new, fresh experience right now? I can answer that for you. We don't. I said we don't. You know why we don't? Because we are human beings. We are not God's. We have an inner self that, that, that the devil people want, to, want you to go inside yourself and find. I like to find it. I know it's there. And what I see scares me to death sometimes. Huh? Listen, we are not gods. We are human beings. And there's things, and the reason that we sometimes don't feel fresh and new is because the cares of this world. I know sometimes uh, that we allow those things to happen to us, uh, and sometimes we do those on our own, uh, and we put ourselves in positions uh, that get us in trouble. I understand that. Uh, but the normal cares of this world uh, get on us sometimes so hard uh, that we don't even feel like praying. Uh, we don't feel like lifting our hands. Uh, we don't feel like running around the church. Uh, we don't feel like saying amen. But can I tell you again, compared to God's mercy and God's grace and His blessings that are new every day just because of God, we ought to do it anyway. Right. Yes. Right. I ain't saying about it being easy. You know, some folks have the ability I'm glad they do. Really, I am. That they can go buy new things, not because the old stuff wore out. They just get tired of looking at it. <laughs> I've never really had that capability. <laughs> I'm kind of torn between a situation right now. I got a vehicle that the transmission is absolutely burnt up in because the person I bought it from was soft spoken and I trusted. I believe they were telling me the truth. Huh? Don't look at me like that. It ain't got nothing to do with the brand of it. I've had trouble with all of them. So have you. Huh? Come on now. That's right. I had trouble with all of them. There I was. That thing started messing up. I said, you've got to be kidding me. So now I've got a man. Just happened to find him on Craigslist. I was looking for something. Didn't know what I was going to do. I found this fellow in Richmond. He's got a transmission shop. Had a vehicle for sale. I thought, man, I'll do some trade with him. 
Come find out you done sold that people. So I said, what, what's about this? Yeah, church business, blah, blah, blah. This is what it's going to take. Blah, 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 blah. He said, but I'll buy it from you. I spent all day yesterday, wasting my day, cleaning that thing up. Had all the stuff on it from the roads in the winter. Cleaned it up because I thought he was coming. He was coming, but something happened he couldn't make. He sent me a message this morning, Sister Pauline, telling me what pennies he would give me for it. I realized I couldn't get full price. It's got to burn up transmission. I'm not that far off. But I know it's worth more than what he was going to offer. I said, just give me a price on what you're going to charge me to fix it, okay? And I'll just go ahead and keep it. Now, you say, well, what's the point? The point is simply this. I can't afford a new one. So i got to fix what i got. Now, if you got the money to buy a new one, I'm glad you can. I really am. I am glad you can. Thank God for it. Maybe if I get broke down, you come get me. Huh? God has a way of making stuff new. New. You know what? And I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting myself here, but when we really get, the old timers used to say, rung up, we can look at that old thing and it'd be just as shiny. Your brother Mitchell and Sister Kathy got off talking about some conspiracies in the world yesterday, and that's a dangerous area. But, now, I may not have these numbers exactly right, Sister Kathy, and I got to think about it, and I might have been a little off on my, what I told you yesterday. I'm not really sure. I hadn't looked at it again. But when, uh, when, when uh, uh, Michael Jackson died, I don't know. I'm thinking the same thing you were. But when he died, I, at the time, I was working in the casket area, uh, hauling, hauling them underground condominiums up and down the road. Okay? Well... They buried him in a solid brass casket. Well, brass is okay, but you do know that if you rub on brass long enough, it'll turn to look like gold. I forget, and I told them it was like 800 and something man hours. I think it's more like 600 and something, if I, if I remember right. But 600 and something plus man hours of several men professionally rubbing on that casket to make it shine like gold. And it was simply brass. But I'm here to tell you that when that thing was done, it would it would knock your eyes out. And, and the inside was all just, you say, what's your point? My point is this. In, 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 a, in a weird way of thinking about it, something so dark and something so forlorn as that there's things in our lives just like that that hurt us just as bad as if it were a funeral. There's things that happen to us that just about take us out. Right. But God has a way of polishing on that to make it look brand new. Not only just look new, but be new. The Bible didn't tell us that He made it look new. He said it was new. Amen. It was new. Hallelujah. Can we wrap our heads around that today? Or are, are, are we kind of like I was this morning when I found out I was supposed to be preaching? It's all confused, tore up, didn't know which way to go. And, and are you so sleepy this morning that you can't understand what I'm saying here? And it's simply this. If we can just wrap our head around the fact that God still can make it brand new. Right. Right. I'll care about it, Lord. I'll care about it, Lord. There's people sitting in churches all across this country right now, Brother Jim, that somebody gave up on. Yes. Hear me? Yes, they are. Somebody gave up on them. Yes. Uh-huh. But somebody didn't. Right. Huh? Somebody kept praying. Somebody kept calling out to God. Somebody kept ringing their name up and putting their face before God and trying to hold their soul up. And because they did, God made them brand new. And they're sitting in the house of God today because God has the ability to make it new. Don't give up on them. God can turn it around. Yes, he can. 
trouble is in our churches today people can't take it straight anymore uh -huh. you're right. hear me right, brother. I found that out first That's right. That's right. people cannot take it straight no, they no, they and then you have times where you don't even say nothing about a situation right. they'll leave anyway right. church I tried to pastor for about five months my first Sunday there, I'm not telling, listen here. My first Sunday there, there's a woman sitting in the back corner over here. The boy, I was preaching on the cross. I was preaching on the blood of Jesus. I mean, I'm telling you, I was, ooh, I was feeling like preaching, man. I was trying to lick it real as I could. I was reaching for her. God, she's lost as a goose in the middle of a frozen pond. And I need to try to reach her. And I was reaching hard as I could, thinking she was lost. She was. I walked to the back of the door to greet the folks when they left. My, my first Sunday there, Sister Pauline, I stood by the back door. She come around that back pew. She's a little short woman. Her hair was almost maybe a little darker than these pews. Huh? What you say? Just a little darker? Same same shade, but just a little darker. But it's up about right here. And everything else, just... She was lost. She come around, and, I, and I'm kind of short, but she's shorter than me. She come around to me, and she said, I shook her hand, I said, I said, man, we're sure glad you come today. Sure like for you to come back. And the next word she said, floored me, Brother Jim Watson. She looked up at me, and she said, oh, I'm the teenage Sunday school teacher. I said, oh, really? You know what that does to a holiness preacher that's gave his life to God's word and tried his best to live it, tried his best to plow it straight, to, tried his best to pull people out of fire and some devilish thing look at you like that and tell you that they're teaching teenage kids. Oh, come on now. I got in the pulpit the next Sunday. I was just as nice as I could possibly be. But don't you know by that next Monday, she met me in the fellowship hall and said, I'm going to leave it because I can't teach Sunday school with what I know you're going to preach. I never said a word about cutting your hair, wearing makeup and jewelry and pants. I didn't know she wore pants. She was a mess. But the danger of that whole thing was, Sister Kathy, she thought she was saved. Can't take it straight anymore. When you look at somebody and you say, God's word says you can not. They'll either stub up and make a scene or they'll take their toys. They'll hit the road. Right. One. I knew after two months it wasn't going to work. Come on here. But I stayed on. I don't know. I don't know why. I just tried. I'm going to tell you something. Above all that, even though we sometimes don't think we can take it straight, does not change the fact it is. Now listen, you don't care about this, but it's about the best illustration I've got for this moment here. You, you, you men that are good with working with wood and building. I mean, I can drive a nail and use measure tape some. But I'm not doing any custom work, I'll tell you that. <coughs> but <coughs> you know that if something is not level, it does spark sometimes it'll be all right and good enough, is it? Sometimes you can't just look at it and say, how to be all right. When you throw the level on it, if it's not exactly right, if something is 30 foot long and it shows that it's out about a quarter of an inch on this end, I will right? show. especially I when you're trying show. to put something straight in the air. Now, I ain't real smart, but I do know that. I will show. 
Well, so I drive a truck and, and pull a 40 foot trailer. It's not very long, but I'm going to tell you something. It's long enough and you stand it straight in the air. Right. And if, that, if those back tires are not exactly level, you can't roll it up on two inches and be out of level. I'm not doing it. And I've seen others say, I'll back it up there and go with it. Uh huh. There's two kinds of trailers, they say. Those that have turned over and those that will. Huh? It's got to be level. It's got to be straight. It's got to be right. It's going to be or I'm not dumping it. What's that got to do with it? Listen. I'm closing. I'm not done, but I'm closing. God can make it new. But let's not get in his way. It's got to be right. His word has not changed. Hear me? And, and, and what, what really, nobody cares about this, and, and I shouldn't be, you know, somebody said, well, you used the pulpit. And I'm not trying to do that today. Nobody cares about my opinion. I understand that. And I found out that there's a lot more people that care less about my opinion than I realized. <laughs> but the danger that we have is people that will take that word Brother Tom knows this. That, that little machine over there that controls that machine back there. I can turn a few buttons a certain way and change everything. Can't we? So don't make me mad. I'll turn you off. No, I'm kidding. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. You know how easily some folks can be fooled? I remember yeah, church I was pastoring the sound man there told me, he said, Sister so-and-so would get up and she'd get to singing. And he said, I would already have her louder than anybody. And he said, she would look back at me and go. He said, I had her louder than everybody. She was killing us. He said, I went. She went. I said, and you didn't move it, did you? He said, no! Old boy come crawling in there to the shop one time, fussing about the shocks on his big truck. These shocks are wore out. Put me some shocks on it. Went off for two or three weeks, falling about the shocks. This tells me like something Brother Jim would do, and I know he would be an opportunity, and probably has. This old guy kept squalling about his shocks. This truck rides like a buckboard. I want some shocks on this thing. He's busy as they could be. They have time to fool with it, and there wasn't the shocks anyway. It's just his old rough hide, I guess. They said, okay, okay, we'll take care of it. <sighs> they pulled it in there. We reached in there, put a piece of cardboard behind it, got a brand new can of spray paint. Painted all them shots. Bright and brand new. Sent it out. Jim, what are you laughing for, huh? <laughs> he drove that thing about two days and finally come in. They said, hey! What about them shocks? I'm telling you, that's the best riding truck I ever had. Now I want to ask you a question. Ain't you glad God don't work like that? That's right. That's right. It makes you brand new. Brand new. God ain't going to rub on brass to make it look like gold. If he gives it to us, it'll be gold. Matter of fact, Man, oh man, listen, matter of fact, he's already got a place that we're going to walk on that's not shined up brass, but it's really gold! But we ain't going to make it there if we don't get it right here. Oh my. I'm sure not brother hard. I can't, I can't, I've got to stop. Listen. I'll tell you this, we're closing. Some years back, I went to visit my grandma Barrett. And I'm telling you, some of you probably had grandmas like, like she was to me. She was one absolute working machine. Now, she did. This generation of today, <laughs> there ain't no way. I'm telling you, if they got up and done, if they got up and done an hour of what she did all day, they'd be in a bed for two. Now. That's right. 
I went to visit her sometime many years ago. I hadn't been there in probably a couple of years. We were traveling, evangelizing, running the roads, gone. Finally got some time, got close. I think I was preaching in the air, maybe over chapel or something. <clears throat> I went over to visit her. I didn't realize, Sister Debbie, she was in such bad shape. First thing I noticed when I walked in, they'd taken out her ringer washer machine. I'm going to tell you, this was, this was way after 2000. She's still washing with a ringer washer machine. Now listen, that, that, that. Some of, this, some of these young girls today can't even spell ringer washer machine. She washed with a ringer washer machine. And that, 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 that's a, that's a, and when it was all done, it dried on the line. And when it was done, she yanked it back in the house and ironed every piece that day before it went in that closet. <clears throat> now, I'm not trying to make... I got, a, I got a precious wife and I'm not trying to get anything done, okay? You hear me? I don't... I just don't... It ain't that. I'm just making a point. My grandpa... Grandma got up at 4 o'clock every morning. She'd go in that kitchen... And if I remember right, I don't even think she owned a microwave. If she did, she didn't know how to operate it. Every morning she got up and she didn't pop him something in the microwave and warm it over and slap it on the table for him. She was up at four. He was up at five. And when his feet hit that kitchen floor and he slid under that table, listen, I know what you're thinking. I can't help it. I'm just telling you this. That's right, she had to build a fire first. She, she had an electric cook stove, but she refused to use that. She built a fire in the middle of July. It's already 90 in the morning, she built a fire. Start cooking. And by the time he hit the floor in that kitchen, slid under that table, there was gravy. There was, there was, uh, there was, uh, he liked, he liked his gravy and light bread. There was eggs, bacon. Sausage. Man, right now. She had all that stuff ready for him. Had his lunch packed. He worked, building houses, come home. He walked in that door. Same thing. She done it every day. She get out and work in the garden. Get out and work around the yard. Mow her grass. Break her own leaves. When you shook her hand, it's like grabbing a hold of a man. Tough, I'm telling you. But this day that I went to visit her, I was tore up. They moved that ringer washing machine aside, and there was a brand new automatic job sitting there. She didn't even know how to operate. Couldn't operate. She done got to the place that she didn't, she couldn't do it. So feeble, she couldn't do it no more. It's tearing me up. I watched her just barely shuffle around the house, trying to make it stumbling, weak. Trying her best want to fix it, something deep. Man, it broke my heart. She wasn't new anymore. Now, she might be. I mean, if job the God judged her correctly in her life, matched up. I truly hope she made it. I ain't to find a judge. None of us are. But I truly hope she made it. I'm believing she did. And if she did, she's better off. She's not in bad shape anymore. But it broke my heart, and I realized then there comes a day to all of us we start breaking down. Yeah. Physically, we do. Yeah. But aren't you glad that spiritually He's got a way of making us brand new? Brad made a sarcastic remark one time to me about we was talking about strength and kind of wrestling and stuff. You may have popped up some comment about that. I was just some truck driver and, uh, you know, pretty much he wasn't much afraid of me or something Said like that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have to explain it to you or prove it to you or nothing. I've done my share. I've done my share of hard work and it cost me every morning when I tried to get up out of that bed. And I'm just 41. But it still cost me. I woke up this morning and I thought there was only half of me in that bed. Because the bottom half was hurting so bad it was almost numb. 
I used my hands and arms and rolled myself over and fought that to get over it and try to get some relief. Because of the stuff I've done. Stuff I've had to do. Now the point I'm telling you, this is might be all it seems to you, friend. But God's got a way of making us brand new. Aren't you glad that we can enter into His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise? Aren't you glad for that? I didn't mean to preach so long. I had no intention to it. And I'm sorry for that. I really am. I tried to do it as fast as I could. I didn't even use all my notes. I can if you want me to. No, I won't. I won't. Would you stand, please? Well, let's pray. Listen to me. That one thing that you look at that looks impossible. Now listen. There's nothing wrong with looking at some of these situations and saying, there ain't no way. Because we're human. We only see you with these eyes. We look at and we judge that, that there's no way that could be turned around. And we do it honestly. But we fail to realize that God, Brother Lynn Head preached a message at, 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 at our convention in, in Richmond, Indiana one year. I think it was the first year he preached it. He preached when God puts his hands on him. Are you okay with that? Okay with that. And I think if we'd step ourselves out of the way, Brother Harold, and let God put his hand on it, wouldn't that change it? Wouldn't that change it? <clears throat> I'm trusting the Lord for a lot of things. And I'm going to say this to you before I close. As a prayer request, in closing, <clears throat> please remember Sister Liz French. Those people are dear to us. Have been for years. They're, they're precious people. And if I've ever met somebody that was strong and tough and trusted God, it's her, for sure. There's others, but definitely her. I remember when I was pastoring them up there, I'd be taking prayer requests and I would say, it's easy to say God can, but what about saying God? And when I would say will, every time I looked at her and she was saying it with me, it's one thing to say God can, but it's another to say God will. She needs a touch right now. Bam. They had some good news and made things look pretty positive there for a while, but in deeper, deeper studies of it, it's not as good as they first thought. I'd love to see God turn that around and make it brand new so that we can tell others that God still can do it. <clears throat> Won't we come today and let God help us? I didn't mean to preach so long. I took time out of the altar call, I guess, but Let's come now. Take time. Let's pray. Seek the Lord all that will. God bless you. Appreciate you.